on today's video, let's answer one simple question. Who should you get? Alexander the Great or Constantine the First out of the first mightiest governor and Wheel of Fortune for infantry commanders? In this video, we're going to talk about both commanders. Which one's the better one? Which one's the worst one? Which one you should get first? Which one you should get second? And why you should get either for what usability and in general a little bit of the shelf life of these commanders and much more for you to make the best decision possible for your gameplay. So sit back, slap a like on the video and let's go. Hey there, YouTube. Welcome back to Gecko Gaming. We're going to continue this kind of small series of the Wheels of Fortune and Mightiest Governor cycles, which ones you should be paying attention to for every single commander, which one of the two, if any, if not both, you should be working on and why. Before we for don't forget to drop a like before we start, subscribe down below, all that needy stuff, and let's get going. So, Alexander the Great is the Wheel of Fortune commander that comes out after Genghis Khan. And behind it comes Constantine I to, to replace Saladin in The Mightiest Governor. Now, in the previous video regarding this subject, we've mentioned how Saladin is probably the best pick to take out of the two if you had to pick one, as he is a 5551 legendary commander that does really, really well. And um, his usability long term is very, very good compared to the one of Genghis Khan, who's also, by the way, a very nasty commander. In this scenario, Alexander the Great is indeed the one of the two commanders you should be focusing on. The reason for that is quite simple. Alexander the Great was a change for infantry. Up until this point, what you had for infantry were Charles Martel and Richard. Charles Martel and Richard, as legendary commanders, were primary garrison defense commanders. As a matter of fact, they're both garrison defense commanders, meaning that the utility of infantry up until now was for primarily tanking and defending. Alexander the Great, as an infantry attack commander that has, on top of the, the attack talent tree, has some very, very, very nasty skills that do a little more direct damage factor, that get a little bit of buffs going on, primarily attack buffs going on and things like that. In his repertoire he is the first infantry commander that does the deed of doing more damage he is not a commander that i would say necessarily goes as a primary commander in the best of scenarios but he can be a primary commander in some of the nastiest marches available in this game to make matters even better alexander being the first attempt of a infantry commander to do damage gives him a huge shelf life because later on in the game, more of these damage dealing infantry commanders come out and he is a great pair for them as well. So as a matter of fact, the next two infantry commanders that are gonna come out of the Wheel of Fortune, which are Guan Yu and Harold, both pair tremendously well with Alexander, which means investing your sculptures in Alexander in the early stage of the game will give you a commander that'll be part of some of your primary marches throughout the game in Rise of Kingdoms, all the way to the late game, all the way to the 800 plus days worth of gaming. And so out of the two, Alexander is the pick. He is the in the beginning as a commander that you don't have another attack commander for. He is usually used as a secondary commander behind Charles Martel or Richard. We explained why Richard primary. Charles Martel does the same concept. You have that video on the channel, card it up on the top right or just go to the channel and you'll find it. Uh, who should be primary and the same concept applies right in the beginning Alexander stays behind Richard behind Charles Martel and does a helps them do a dumb amount of damage while they're tanking other usability of Alex by the way is as a primary commander with YSG behind him doing some AOE damage while doing some infantry damage as well this is a less tanky march but a very successful march both for open field as well as rally leading. So Alexander can truly take, he is really part of the ecosystem of fighting in Rise of Kingdoms to a very, very big extent. As a matter of fact, the number one commander we all, all the content creators and pretty much anyone you talk to would recommend to you to expertise first would be YSG. His usability is just completely out of the ballpark of imagination. But Alexander, is definitely a close second. If Alexander had some AoE, he might even take first place, to be honest. But, I mean, the AoE that YSG has, no one can exchange. And that's what keeps him up on the top. But Alexander is a close second. As a matter of fact, if you're asking, who should I expertise? I cannot expertise too many commanders. 
YSG and Alexander expertise give you a ton of options, either working with each other or working with other commanders and buffing them up. And so Alexander, out of the two of Alexander and Constantine, is the pick. However, Constantine is not a bad commander. I wouldn't tell you do not get Constantine. Constantine has a lot of usability, and as a matter of fact, in the late stage of the game, Constantine comes out a lot more. Uh, in the early stages of Rise of Kingdoms in general, Constantine seemed to be a little bit of a dud. Uh, he is a very strong garrison support commander with a really dumb amount of healing. Well, 15,000 healing every, I believe, every couple of minutes that you can uh, trigger this. When was it in general? Or you can do it every once in a fight or something like that. And to on top of crazy healing, he has a like, garrison skill, which is a little bit problematic. Infantry health buffs, uh, nobody really wanted to buff even further the tankiness of infantry. So for a bit, Constantine was considered a dud. As you approach the late game, Constantine starts being really, really interesting. Constantine's primary usage is as a primary debuffing buffing commander that hosts with him a secondary commander that is a debuffer, buffer, Mulan, Joan, Ethelflaed, and... It gives a little bit of tankiness and healing and and life shelf to a shelf life. I always mix those two words to a march that is supposed to be a buffing debuffing march support on the field. But in the early stages of Rise of Kingdoms, people are not looking to be support marches, but rather attack and more uh, aggressive marches. Constantine is also fantastic for Lost Canyon, Sunset Canyon. Once you get him to five five one one, which is what we tried to do at some point with this account. He's going to be really, 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 really good for you in your Sunset Canyon, Lost Canyon lineups. That's why a lot of people like to get him there with a crazy amount of tankiness and a huge attack reduction and damage, damage taken reduced even further. You can really put him in some very strong situations to tank a lot of marches while your Lost Canyon, Sunset Canyon marches do their thing. However, the usability of him is, is a little bit weird. He is the first one to shine a light on a defense against the Takeda. Charles Martel Constantine is one of the best Takeda defenses up until you start getting something like Theo and so forth and so on. It's not the greatest of all defenses and it'll not necessarily trade him very positive, but it's definitely the one that takes the least damage in the stages where Atel Takeda are very new and uh, are, are not really countered yet by things like Theo, uh, Charles Martel Theo, or even Zenobia nowadays. But in the early stages, his usability is very good for that. So if you tell me you want to be a garrison commander, which is a tough job because it's not really very, pay, it doesn't pay off too much, but it's a very scarce type of role. People don't like to be that much of garrison commanders. But if you do feel like being a garrison player, I would say that getting Constantine is very, very important to have him in your arsenal. But if you're a regular Rise of Kingdoms player looking to get as many kills as you can, enjoy the game, fight on the open field, launch rallies and all that stuff, I don't think that Constantine is a place where you want to invest early on. His shelf life actually begins later in later stages in the game. Now, granted, if you do get him early on, you can definitely do things with him, right? Alexander... Uh, Constantine do t decently well and that allows you to potentially do like a I've seen Charles Martel Alexander's and then Richard Constantine marches out there which is kind of crazy but it does do the job right so if you have to pick between the two I would definitely pick Alexander over Constantine but if you had the option to get both I would still get Alex first and Constantine next you don't really need Constantine as early as he comes out but Alex Every day that you have him is great. The quicker, the better. And when it comes to whether or not you should even at least unlock Constantine, obviously I'll always unlock him, try to get him to that 5-5-1-1 five, five, one, one at the very minimum if you really want to have him useful. And then you can use him on the open field a little. He's not as good, but he'll do decent. And you can definitely use him in Sunset Canyon and have him be more viable. The bottom line out of this conversation is that the... Shelf life of Alexander is stupendously longer. It is much more versatile. You'll be able to do some crazy things with them. Later on, Guan Alex rallies are some of the, the best infantry rallies in the game. And from there, Harold Alex are also very good uh, open, uh, open field and rally marches. Both of them really, both are really good open field and, gear, and, and rally leading. And that's just, you know, 
100 to 400 days worth of gameplay with the one commander. Anyway, I would take Alex. I would take Constantine second. Definitely worth your investment. Get your Constantine at least a 5511. If you want to be a garrison commander, uh, I would urge you to get him expertise. And yeah, that's about that. What do you think about my assessment? Would you do anything different? Would you pick Constantine over Alexander? What would you tell a player that doesn't know anything about these commanders, but wants to know what he or she should be investing in? Drop me a comment down below and let me know. And I will see you all in the next video. Have a good one. Peace.